Well, good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome back. This is I'm Josh from the Toucan Driving School. For anyone that doesn't already know me, if you haven't already, like, subscribe. If you're learning to drive, or you're already driving, or you're thinking about becoming a driving instructor, or you just want some tips and hints, click that like and subscribe now. Today, we're going to be talking about how to change gear. This picture here, as you can probably already tell, is a gear stick. The gear stick is used to change the gear of the car. The gear of the car needs to match the current speed that you're going. If your gear is too high for the speed of the car, chances are you're going to stall. Now that can be embarrassing. If your gear is too low for the speed of the car, you're going to use more fuel and possibly damage the engine. Along with that, your car is going to be screaming at you. Now the recommended speed for each gear is actually different depending on whether you've got a petrol, a diesel, and the size of the engine. Now I have a 1.2 diesel Peugeot, so I'm going to show you the ideal speed for the ideal gear in my car. Now you can easily work this out in your car because when your car gets to about 2000 revs, that's when you should normally be changing gear. So in my car, first gear should generally be used to get the car moving from zero to 10 miles an hour. When you get to 10 miles an hour or above, the car will start changing its noise a clear indication that you need to change gear. Second gear runs from a minimum of 10 miles per hour up to 25 miles per hour. The minimum speed for third gear is around 25 miles per hour. The minimum speed for fourth gear is around 40 miles per hour. And finally, the minimum speed for fifth gear is around 50 miles per hour. Now, the maximum range I've showed you here for each gear does not mean that you must change gear when you hit that. In some situations, perhaps you need some extra power, in which case you might stay in that gear for a bit longer. An example might be to get out the way of an ambulance. Another example might be to overtake a very slow moving vehicle. Now 30 second explanation, now very simplified 30 second explanation about gears. So very similar to a push bike, each gear is attached to a cog. Each cog is a different size. Now first gear is actually the most powerful gear. It's also the smallest cog. It means it turns a lot faster, giving us a lot more force but it can only be used at very low speeds. And this is what affects how much force we actually have in the car. Now enough about cogs. While changing gear, the clutch must be held down. Now looking at this diagram on top of the gear stick, you can see there are a number of lines. There are also numbers on the gear stick. Each number on the gear stick represents a gear. So on this particular gear stick, like my car, it runs from gear one to five with a reverse. Some cars actually have six or more gears. Now the lines that have been highlighted for you actually show the neutral line. The neutral line means while the gear stick is sitting in that position, the gas will not move the car because the wheels are not connected to the engine. Another 20 second explanation. Do you notice that the lines on the top of the gear stick diagram are actually 90 degree angles? This means when you're changing gear, you must move the stick in 90 degree angles or you will end up in the wrong gear. Moving on, now we're going to look at the best way to change gear. Now, as a driving instructor, this is my biggest tip for all you learners out there. Really try to learn the palming technique. You might be asking, what is that? Looking at the picture, as you can see, it just simply means using the palm of your hand to change gear. This essentially means only using the side of the gear stick, never the top. Why is this? This will prevent you going into the wrong gear when changing gear. Here is an example of me changing into first gear from neutral using the palming method. This is how you change from first gear into second gear using the palming method. This is how you would change gear from second to third gear using the palming method. Third to fourth gear. Fourth gear to fifth gear. And neutral into reverse. Now, as you can see from here, my car will not allow you to go from fifth gear into reverse. This is a safety mechanism to stop someone traveling at 50 miles an hour and then slamming it into reverse gear. Some cars actually have a safety mechanism that you have to push or pull up in order to put it into reverse. Now something to quickly note, changing gear is not about strength. It is purely about guidance. As an example, you can easily change gear with just one or two fingers. It's all about following the 90 degree angles. If you also look at when I change gear, I tend to do it in two motions. There is no rush when changing gear. The important thing is technique. Now you can easily practice this while you're in a standstill. There is no need to be moving the car. 
As long as you make sure the clutch is down, you can repeatedly change gear, practicing the palming technique until you feel confident to do it on the road. Now that is the end of today's tutorial on how to change gear. If you have any questions related to that, please pop it in the comments and I'll get straight back to you. If you also think I should venture into modeling my left hand, pop it in the comments and I'll look into a changing career. If that helped you, now is the time to like and subscribe and you won't miss out on what's coming next. See you soon.